Welcome back to more TFT news. First up, the big news. Mega Scatterbomb has finally launched their anti-cheat software in open beta. This still lets you tag players in Team Fortress 2 as bots or cheaters. Not only that, but your gameplay is recorded with the in-game demo recording and sent to a remote server for analysis. If any player on that server is actually cheating, they will be verified and added to a database. The next time someone with anti-cheat software is installed uh, plays TF2, they will be notified if the cheater is in their game. If enough people have this software, that cheater will be automatically kicked from the match. For more details, check out Mega Scatterbomb's latest video, which explains everything in depth. So far, I haven't encountered a single bot in TF2, and it's been really fun to play the game normally. However, even though the bots are gone for now, this could be temporary. We already know that cheaters are updating their software and getting back to the cheating. If Valve continues with anti-cheat updates and banning cheaters, we might not need a committee-made anti-cheat software. Still, it is great to have a backup option in case Valve decides to leave us. Next, let's talk about a fixed TF2 and a boycott. Is it over? There is always the possibility of bots returning and Valve abandoning the game again. But for now, the movement has lost momentum since Valve did what we asked. Ban the bots. It has been over a month since the ban wave and I think we would have seen the bots return by now. Yet that hasn't happened. Everyone is shocked that a game that, that has been in, a, in an unplayable state for nearly 7 years was fixed overnight. Maybe a month isn't long enough to say Valve has finally fixed TF2, but I also don't think they did this just to make money from the summer update. Comparing save TF2 with fixed TF2, it is clear that fixed TF2 was at least 10 times bigger, and the pressure made them take action. I don't think it is necessary to keep the movement going, but we are not letting Valve off the hook either. We should acknowledge that they've sold the bot crisis. While I would love to see a heavy update or new weapons to enjoy, I would take constant anti-cheat updates over those. Let's just hope that this isn't a temporary solution. As for the boycott, I have to admit, I failed. As someone who has been a fan of TF2, during its worst years, this update made me wanna unbox a couple of cases, which I did. I unlocked three summer cases and all I got was blue. I make really bad economic decisions, so kids, never gamble. Not that I would recommend gambling if I got something rare. Like I used to say all the time, don't spend money if you don't enjoy the game. And if you go back a couple months ago, it was insane how many bots and cheaters there were. The question is that, can we trust Valve or not? And that is up to yourself. On the topic of bots, you may receive spam messages on Steam. Right now there are fake save.tf2 websites going around asking you to sign a petition, even though the petition is already over. If you click to sign, it, it asks for your Steam login and 2FA, stealing your account to trade all of your items to scammers. Be careful when browsing the web, these scams are really frequent, where the website has a really similar address to the one you were looking for. You might believe the login page is safe, but as soon as you enter your credentials, your account gets stolen. This happened to me once, but luckily I didn't lose anything because I changed my passwords really quickly. If you fall for the scam, change your passwords really quick. Lastly, don't trust strangers sharing links, especially on Steam. If someone adds you and quickly sends a link, it might be malicious. Just some basic internet safety knowledge. While the ban wave targeted bots and cheaters, some players got banned for non-cheating reasons. Apparently one user was banned for using map bugs, not cheat software. This person could be lying to hide their cheating, but it is still worth discussing whether in-game exploits are valid reasons for a ban. The Steam page for TF2 ban states that intentionally harming the game and other players is a valid reason for a game ban. Some map exploits in TF2 are incredibly overpowered, like placing a sentry gun below the map. Just because you can do it, doesn't mean you should. The same goes for the recent SV Cheats 1 exploit. Repeated usage of such exploits should be punished, but a permanent ban for using a game exploit seems to be 
too harsh since it is the developer's job to patch these things out. The developers should expect some players to take advantage of these exploits. Unfortunately, it's TF the bans are permanent, so do not mess around. But I would like to hear your opinion. Should we ban everyone in TF2 who doesn't cheat but uses exploits? While TF2 isn't getting a proper major update, we are seeing small yet important improvements. Recently, Steam received an update that allows players to decode their games. Now, Steam recording sports TF2, meaning whenever you get a kill or die, a little marker will appear in the recordings, allowing you to easily create gameplay clips. TF2 is famous for its funny and silly video clips, so this update will make it easier for people to record their games without needing to use programs like OBS. Steam will start recording as soon as you launch your game, but only if you select a time range will it be saved to your disk. This makes Steam recording superior to other solutions like Nvidia's Shadow Play. It is currently in beta, but I would love to see more features like changing the encoder settings and allowing higher bitrates. If you're interested in recording your game, you might want to enable Steam recording. As long as you have a graphics card with a dedicated hardware encoding, the performance set for enabling Steam recording should be very minimal. With every new update, we get plenty of new cosmetics to dress up with, except for Summer 2024, we got two cosmetics that were talked about the most. First, the little robot body, the, the Butler 2000. Normally, this type of cosmetics in TF2 would be restricted to Halloween, as it's not something you would usually see in the game. It is a pet that follows you, and unlike other similar cosmetics, this one is allowed all year which can cause a lot of visual clutter. If Valve continues with these type of uh, pet cosmetics, we might see dogs, cats and all kinds of things that create a mess. We are already complaining about TF2's visual style has changed over the years. I definitely don't like this cosmetic and I hope we don't see a robot dog or something similar. Also, I find this cosmetic misleading because you can only see the little robot body if you use it as command which allows you to see your own body while playing. You are basically paying $20 for a cosmetic that only becomes worth it if you decide to play with, a, with this weird virtual reality command. The next cosmetic that got a lot of attention was the new engineer cosmetic, Desk Engineer. This cosmetic has a hidden transgender and bisexual flag, only visible if you look at it from the inside out. Not everyone was happy about this while most people don't really care. I believe Valve closely inspects the textures to ensure nothing, I nothing inappropriate is hidden, so they must have allowed this easter egg. I don't really care either, but I realize this can be problematic. How far can users go when hiding easter eggs in workshop submissions? Personally. I would prefer a custom style that replaces the ID card with the flags instead of hiding them in the textures. We already have decal cosmetics that allow us to put custom images on them. Honestly, it would be more interesting to have cosmetics that allow custom images rather than hiding a flag that is invisible unless you specifically look at the texture files. With the new update, people who don't want to see custom decals can simply turn, up, turn them off in the advanced options and only see the default versions of the cosmetic. Why are we acting like we need to hide these things when we can already have custom nicknames, profile pictures and use custom decals to put Im images into the game? If you really want to hide any easter egg in the textures, make it something related to TF2. By hiding LGBT flags, you're giving people who don't care about it to have a reason to hate the community. Claiming Vogue culture is being forced on them, just make it a custom decal item that lets you put whatever you wanted. But in the end, it is just a single cosmetic. I said it was a drama, but in reality, most people don't really care. Not a, not a big deal. Talking about cosmetics, Golden Pan, which is one of the most expensive items in the game, costing over $5,000. Well, weirdly enough, in TF2, when a highly valued item gets destroyed, a message gets displayed in the game for everyone to look at. And recently, a golden pen was deleted. This is not the first time that a golden pen was deleted. Before this, another golden pen was destroyed for the first time, and a lot of people were mad. Why would anyone delete such a highly valued item when they can give it away to someone else? 
Obviously, since they own the item, they can do whatever they wanted. That includes destroying it. Honestly, it's kind of a waste to delete an item. And there are so many people who are willing to purchase a golden pen, maybe at a discount. And if you if you seriously hate the money, you can donate it as well. But in the end, it is just an item in a video game, nothing to cry about. Actually, a month ago, an item that was a lot more valuable was deleted. The first ever sex award, which was, I believe, was destroyed for the fixity of the movement. Team Fortress 2 after the update is broken. At least for a while, it was. I believe it was fixed recently, but if you equip the Scottish Resistance, you would see a big error. Probably this summer update somehow broke the model for the Scottish Resistance, and in its place, you get this giant error sign. Finally, a new gun for TF2, since Scottish Resistance is barely used. Pretty much no one noticed. If this was a different weapon like, I don't know, the normal sticky launcher, everyone would have noticed it. Knowing that a couple of months ago, the strange gun used to shoot Scottish resistance makes me think. What the heck is wrong with Scottish resistance? It's while trying to hide something. If you're looking to play a new game this summer, can I interest you in Sandbox? While unrelated to TF2, I thought it was worth to talk about this in the video. Sandbox, which is like a sequel to Gmod, has been released as early access, now available to everyone through their website. Like I said, it is in early access, don't expect anything big, but if you're interested in modding or making games, you can give Sandbox a try. Another unrelated TF2 news, Valve seems to be working on a new Half-Life game that is probably not a VR game. We know for a fact that yes, Valve does make video game projects, uh, it just none of these projects actually makes it out, becoming a proper game. Anyways, one of the voice actors leaked the project name, which is called White Sands. With also some data mining, it was indeed true that this project is related to Half-Life. In future years, we could be getting Half-Life 3, but it could be a different game too. It is just speculation. Let's just hope that this is not a Half-Life card game. Anyways, that will be it for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and see you in another video. Bye.